वेलकम बैक चिल्ड्रन इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर आई हैड गिवन यू द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ सेल एज द फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ वेयर वी हैड ऑल गॉन फॉर रिकेपिटुलेशन ऑफ ऑल द कंटेंट्स दैट यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन क्लास एट राइट नाउ आई एम अबाउट टू बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट very important component of a living cell that is the cell membrane and in this lecture we will be discussing mainly about the structure of the cell membrane functions of the cell membrane and behavior of cells in different solutions right now just have a look at this cell we have already done before that the outermost limiting membrane in any cell especially the animal cells is the cell membrane whereas a plant cell will have an additional layer of the cell wall covering the cell membrane since today we are learning mainly about the cell membrane we will concentrate mainly on this layer which is the outermost layer what are the basic features of this particular membrane the cell membrane is a living flexible membrane and it has immense flexibility now for explaining the structure of the cell membrane several scientists came up with different structures but the most widely accepted model explaining the structure of the cell membrane was the fluid mosaic model that was suggested by singer and nicholson now this model that is the fluid mosaic model is not given in your ncrt so i insist all of you when i am explaining have a closer look at the structure so that you can understand now this is the fluid mosaic model given by singer and nicholson to explain the structure of the cell membrane you can see that it is comprising of two layers this is one layer and this is another layer now this layer is made up of lipids and hence it is called a lipid bilayer you can see these structures which are highlighted inside and they are also present outside in the model these structures are the proteins those which are present within the lipid bilayer are called intrinsic proteins and those which are present outside are called extrinsic proteins with the help of these proteins you can say that inside and outside it forms a design or a mosaic and hence the name given to the model fluid mosaic model so you can say that what are the basic components or what is the cell membrane chemically composed of it comprises of a bilayer of lipids and it is due to the presence of these lipids that the cell membrane has fluidity and viscosity making the membrane more and more flexible you know that is the reason why unicellular organisms like amoeba they can project out pseudopodia they can engulf the nutrients they can remove the waste out of their bodies because of the flexibility of the cell membrane that they can mold their shape accordingly had it been a rigid layer this would not have been possible right the proteins that are embedded within the lipids are called intrinsic proteins and i had already shown you in the structure whereas those proteins that lie outside are called extrinsic proteins so this explains the structure of the cell membrane coming now to the functions of the cell membrane how is this membrane so very important to the cell the first and foremost function is that it gives form and shape to the cell secondly it maintains a balanced environment which is called hemostasis every cell has a balanced environment within the cell and it is all attributed to the presence of this cell membrane if the cell membrane ruptures then this hemostasis is lost and the cell death takes place not only this it protects the cell from injury and since this membrane is no ordinary membrane it is a permeable membrane 
What do I mean by permeable? Permeable means it has pores, it has porosity and whenever any membrane has got porosity, movement across the membrane will be possible. That is substances will enter inside and substances will move across the membrane. And this cell membrane does not have normal permeability it has selective permeability okay what does this selective permeability mean and how is it helpful i will be explaining the flexible nature allows processes like endocytosis as i had just explained okay now what is selective permeability the cell membrane is characterized to be selectively permeable that is it allows only useful substances to enter. The metabolic intermediates that are produ produced within the cell are retained and the secretions and wastes which are not required by the cell are eliminated from the cell and it is all due to this ability of the selective permeability of the cell membrane. Now, since we know that this membrane has selective permeability obviously it will regulate entry and exit of substances on a selective basis and how will this movement take place now movement of substances across the membrane follows two basic principles the first one is the physical phenomena of diffusion and the second one is osmosis what is diffusion the movement of substances spontaneously from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration to facilitate uniform distribution is called diffusion. Whereas osmosis is slightly different in a sense that here the bigger particles cannot move. Okay, hence in this kind of a special diffusion only the solvent molecules or the water molecules moves from a region of higher water concentration to lower water concentration across a semi permeable membrane. Now children you need to understand that in diffusion spontaneously substances will move from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration for example let us say oxygen molecules are more present over here okay and the concentration of oxygen is high and this is the cell membrane and concentration inside the cell is less so spontaneously this oxygen will move from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration this is diffusion now when i say osmosis osmosis definitely needs a membrane diffusion does not necessarily need a membrane okay even if this membrane is not there the nutrients ions gases will move from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration till it is uniformly distributed now when we talk about osmosis across the semi permeable membrane when there are two solutions across it one with a higher water concentration and one with a lower water concentration then the water molecules will move from a region of higher water concentration to lower water concentration across the semi permeable membrane and this phenomenon is called osmosis now very important we need to understand children that what is a solution and how do we make a solution right a solution will always contain a solid that is solute which is completely dissolved in a solvent that is water to form a solution which is a homogeneous mixture for example i want to make a salt solution right so what will i do i will take salt which is the solid and i will dissolve it in the solvent that is water till i get a salt solution that is the salt completely dissolves in water such that I will not be able to segregate where is the salt and where is the water. So this is called diffusion and osmosis and substances will move across the membrane either through diffusion or osmosis. 
Now we'll be learning two important types of osmosis and we will learn the behavior of the cell when it is placed in different types of solutions. Now first of all before we summarize this we should know the different types of solutions. The first one is hypotonic solution in simple terms it is called dilute solution how do we make a hypotonic solution a hypotonic solution is made when you have less amount of solute plus more amount of water okay and this kind of a solution that will be made where there is less solute dissolved in more amount of water then this is called a dilute solution or a hypotonic solution where the water concentration is more in the solution. Now if you place a living cell in a hypotonic solution obviously this is the cell membrane there is water in the protoplasm also and there is water outside also. Inside the protoplasm water is less and hypotonic solution so water is more and as I said water will move from a region of higher water concentration to lower water concentration. So water from outside will enter inside the cell due to the concentration difference across the membrane. And as a result when water enters inside the cell the cell will become swell or it will be a uh, swell and it will become a turgid cell that is once it enters it will swell and it will become a turgid cell this phenomenon of osmotic entry of water inside the cell due to movement of water from outside to the inside is called endosmosis you get me children now the second type of solution that is hypertonic solution or concentrated solution now this is exactly opposite of hypotonic solution concentrated solution means when you make a solution where the solute is more and water is less for example i want to make a concentrated sugar solution i will take more amount of sugar and i will dissolve it in less amount of water and this kind of a solution that will be made will be a hypertonic solution where water is less and solute is more now if i place a living cell in a hypertonic solution what will happen children water inside now becomes more and outside it becomes less because this is a hypertonic solution and water moves from a region of higher water concentration to lower so water instead of entering will exit the cell it will come out of the cell resulting into a shrunken cell that is shrinkage will take place because water will move out such a cell is called a flaccid cell and this phenomena of osmotic exit of water from the cell into the outer environment across the membrane is called exosmosis now the last type of solution is an isotonic solution an isotonic solution is a balanced solution where water concentration outside and inside the cell is equal. Hence, since there is no gradient develop, no movement across the membrane will take place and the cell will remain as it is, neither will it shrink nor will it swell. And generally, whenever we want to preserve cells, we generally place them in isotonic solution so that they remain the same as they are. So for today, children, you have learned few things. That is the structure of the cell membrane. You have learned the functions of the cell membrane and you have learned different types of solution with the behavior of the cells in different solution. So just to recapitulate, whenever you will put a cell in a hypotonic solution, it will become turgid due to endosmosis. Whenever you will put a cell in hypertonic or concentrated where the solvent is less and solute is more, then the cell will become flaccid due to exosmosis. And finally, in an isotonic solution where there is a balanced water concentration, the cell will retain its shape and 
cells. So this is all for today and I insist uh, all of you read the notes and whatever I have done till now prepare it and I have given you the assignment. So based on these two videos the introductory one and the membrane try to solve the assignment. Thank you and have a nice day.